Welcome to this week's class on Chassidus. This week we're going to be learning a Chassidic discourse of the Rebbe. The Rebbe said this Chassidic discourse on Shabbos Parshas Dvarim, Shabbos Chazoin, the fourth day of the, m- the month of Av, Menachim Av, in the year Tafshin Chav Tes, which is exactly 51 years ago, the same Shabbat, like this Shabbos, with Shabbos Dvarim and Shabbos Chazoin, and the fourth day of the month of Av. So it's based on the Haftorah of this Shabbos, which begins Chazoin, and the Haftorah is from Isaiah. So the uh, last verse in the Haftorah, which is based on Isaiah chapter 1, verse 27, so the prophet says as follows, Tzioin b'mishpa tipodeh v'shaveha b'tzdaka. So Tzioin is a word which there's many different uh, translations and understandings of the word, but it says Tzioin, which refers to in general uh, Jerusalem, b'mishpa tipodeh, will be redeemed through justice, and its captives will be redeemed, what? Through the idea of tzedakah. So the Rebbe introduces a different uh, translation, an insight into this verse, which says that this that will be going out of, of Golos, this that will be going out of exile, that will be thanks to the tzedakah of Hashem, the righteousness of Hashem, the charity of Hashem, because we know l'cha Hashem tzedakah, Hashem is the greatest giver of charity. He's the ultimate giver of kindness and goodness. And when Hashem gives, the tzedakah of Hashem is without limits. So when you have the blessings of Hashem without limits, then the Shaveho, whoever is stuck in captivity, will have a true and complete redemption. Obviously, in order for that to come about, we need to do our part, like the Rambam writes. When we do tshuva, the Rambam writes, we will be redeemed when? Right away. So it's an immediate results. We do tshuva, we're redeemed right away. In other words, as we know, for example, it says in reference to going out of this exile, it says, Just like the Jewish people when they went out of Egypt, that's the type of miracles we'll have. So the Rebbe explains that we know when the Jewish people left Egypt, they didn't just leave, they had to have some mitzvahs in their hand. So there were two mitzvahs that they had. What were the two mitzvahs? Two mitzvahs associated with blood. One was the blood of circumcision. That means whoever was not circumcised made sure to circumcise himself. And also the blood of the Paschal Lamb. They all partook in the carbon Pesach. So because of the two bloods, the bloods of the Paschal Lamb and the blood of circumcision, that caused them to go out of exile. The same thing also when we do our tshuva today, we will be redeemed. And again, as tzedakah from Hashem, it will be what? Without limits. So the Rebbe asks a simple question. On one hand, what are we saying? V'shaveha, we're going to be redeemed, but tzedakah. The tzedakah of Hashem without limits. What does it say in the first half of the verse? Tzioim b'mishpat hipadah. Mishpat means a judgment. Judgment means that there's limitations to it. This one is worthy, this one's not worthy. How much you're worthy. Tzedakah was saying is out without limits. So how do the two go together in the same verse? We're going to be redeemed with limits or without limits. So the, the Rebbe brings from the Tzemach Tzedek, and the Tzemach Tzedek, which is the third Chabad Rebbe, in a Chassidic discourse he explains that Tzioin is a reference to what? Torah scholars. And the um, Shaveha, he translates as simple people. So therefore, based on this, the Tzemach Tzedek translates the verse as follows. That Tzioin, the Torah scholars, because they learn Torah, so they have something to uh, come to Hashem, hey, we're learning Torah. So Tzioin, the Torah scholars, are Mishra Petibada. Through justice, they're going to be redeemed. They don't need any special favors. They learn Torah. They connect to Hashem through le- learning Torah. So they're going to be redeemed. But the Shaveha, People that are simple people, they don't necessarily learn so much Torah. They don't necessarily dedicate the time totally to, co- to connect with Hashem. So they will have their, they will have their redemption with Shaveha. They will have their redemption with Staka as a graciousness from Hashem. So that's what the Tzemach Tzedek translates um, the verse. Which seemingly you have to understand, what does that mean? What is, it, what is the Tzemach Tzedek saying? So Tzioin, if you learn Torah, it's judgment. I get it. You have a reason to go out. But, and Shaveh, simple people, go out what? With Zdaka. 
because I, you have no maybe necessarily a reason why to go out, but Hashem is going to give you a gift, you'll leave. But on the other hand, what are we saying? Tzedakah means it's Tzedakah of Hashem, which is without limits. So why is it that simple people get the gift from Hashem, which is without limits, versus people that learn Torah only get with limits? So the Rebbe explains this based on a Hasidic discourse from the Rebbe Maharash. And Rebbe expl- Maharash explains that we have dealing with, what are we being dealing from? Unfortunately, we're in exile. Why are we in exile? Because we don't have the temple. And not only we don't have the temple, we don't have the temples, two temples. As we know, for example, already next Shabbat, not this Shabbat, but the following Shabbos, we're going to read from the Aftorah, Nachamu, Nachamu, Ami, where Hashem comforts the Jewish people. So it doesn't say Nachamu once, comforting once. It says Nachamu, Nachamu, twice comforting. Why does it say twice comforting? Because we also know that in the, in, in the prophets it says, Bachay Tifka, we cry twice. Why do we cry twice? If we cried, it should be a hundred times, a thousand times. If we're comforted, why limiting it to do? So the Rebbe Marash explains that what happens we sin twice, globally, and therefore we lost two temples, we lost temple twice, and therefore we bachay tifka, that's why we cry twice, and then we have nachamu, 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 we have the comforting twice for the two different temples. That means there was two destructions. One destruction for the first temple, which was its own avoid of one type of crying, one type of comforting, and then there was the destruction of the second temple, which was a second type of crying and a second type of comforting. What does that mean? That's a two different types of destruction. So the Rebbe explains very simple, based on the Rebbe Marash, and he says like this, that we know there's the Hashem is kutcha brichu. Hashem gives off tremendous spiritual light. Then the Shechina, the way, the way the light comes into this world. The temple, the base Hamigdash, that's the place where Hashem dwelled in this world. So in the world, the world, the world of Kabbalah, it's called the Hay of Hashem's name. We know Hashem has, his name is spelled Yud Hay Vav Hay. The Yud is, resembles the idea of Chachma, the light of Chachma. Bina is the way it takes that light that comes from Chachma and the way it develops it. Vav is the Midot, the emotions. And the last He is Malchus, the way it receives all those powerful emotions in it. So the Rebbe Marash explains that the first destruction was what? The first letter of the He, the first He of Hashem's name. The second destruction is the second hay of Hashem's name. So what does that mean practically? Yud has to equal hay. Chachma has to give in to Bina. Yud has to give in to hay. Vav, the Midas, has to match up with hay, which is Malchus. But what happens, unfortunately, when you have the destruction of the temple, when the first hay is lacking, so to speak, the first temple when it was destroyed, you're lacking the hay. So you have Hashem's light, but there's nowhere to receive the light. The same thing also with the second temple when it was destroyed. It was lacking the second hay, it was lacking Malchus, and therefore there's no place for the Vav to put its light in. That's the idea of destruction of the first, temp- first and second temple spiritually, which is a reference to, and again, in Hashem's name, the hay, the first hay for the first temple being destroyed, and the second hay for the second, second temple being destroyed. Now, so what does that mean practically? It's the practical avoid where you're not allowing the light from the Yud going into the first Hay, which is the first temple, and the light of the second, from the Vav going into the second Hay of Hashem. Now, the fact is today, we don't have both temples. So technically, we have the destruction of of both. But not only that, that we have the destruction of the temple, the Rebbe quotes the Talmud that says that whoever in their generation, the temple was not rebuilt. So even though, let's say you can say, well, what do you want? We're living in a generation. There is no temple. But the Talmud says that if the temple wasn't built, rebuilt in our generation, it's as if we destroyed it. Why? Because there's one thing that was destroyed. But if, why is it not being rebuilt? So if it's not being rebuilt, it's as if we destroyed it. So practically speaking, is we are lacking today both unions. Which union? Well, you lacking today the union of Yud Hey. We're lacking also today the Vav Hay because we have the destruction in the temple and since it's not been rebuilt, so we're technically part of the destruction, but we're lacking it. And we're lacking both. Those two unions are, are, are not there. Now, even though we're lacking both, which is the main union, union that we're lacking? So we're lacking the second one 
Just like in the second temple, there was missing certain things that was not in the first temple. So they were missing technically the first temple as well. But the avoida in the second temple was, it was even though it was missing both, it's the second of the second hey. The same thing also we're lacking today, we're lacking both temples, but which we're lacking the Yud and the Hay Union, and we're lacking the Vav and the Hay Union. But what we're really lacking, which important to us, and that's the part we have to fix, is the union what of the second yud, the second hay, which is the, the union of, of Vav Hay. And the Rebbe brings from the Zohar, the Zohar says like this, that the Zohar quotes a verse from the prophet Hoshea in chapter 11, verse 9. So over there, Hashem says, that Hashem is not going to go into the city. So the Zohar explains, what does it mean Hashem is not going to the city? So the Zohar says, there's something which is called Yerushalayim Shalmaila, the Jerusalem on high, and there's Yerushalayim Shalmata, there's Jerusalem on, on, on low. Which means, there's a temple in the heaven, and there's a temple down below. The temple down below is destroyed. Hashem can go into the temple in heaven. Hashem says, no, no, no. Until there's no temple down here, I'm not going into the temple up there. I'm not looking first for a temple for myself. If the Jewish people don't have a temple, I'm not going, in, I'm not going into my temple. That's what the Zohar says. The Zohar goes on further to say, what does that mean practically? That we said there's two destructions in Hashem's name. There's the destruction of the Vav Hei, which is the destruction of the temple, second temple. And there's the destruction of the Yud Hei, which is the destruction of the first temple. What is the, the temple on high referring to? The Yud Hei union. What is the temple below? The Vav Hei union. So what the Zohar says, Hashem is saying is, even though I can walk into the temple on high, which means I can rebuild the temple of Yud, Yud Hei, but I'm not going to go ahead and rebuild it. And I'm not going to go into the temple of Yudhei. I'm not going to allow it to be destroyed as long as the temple of Vavhei is destroyed. Hashem is not going into the temple of Yudhei. So the Rebbe asked a question. We all know it says in Kabbalah that Chachma and Bina, which Chachma represent, represents the Yud, and Bina represents Hei. So Yudhei. So Chachma and Bina, it says in the Zohar, and I'll quote it, they are train Reyin, they're two friends, Chachma and Bina are two buddies, the Loim is Parshin, they never get separated. That Chachma and Bina always connected. We just said that what happened was when the temple was destroyed, there's a disconnect between Yud and Hay, because Yud Hay is not there, so Yud has nowhere to, uh, to, to, to find itself, a, a friend, but we know in the Zohar it says Chachma and Bina are two friends that never get separated. So the rabbi explains, that's true. Chach, there's, we all know in Kabbalah and Chesidut, there's something which is called Pneumius and Chitzonius. There's something which has the internal part, and then you have the external part. The internal part is where it's really at, the importance, and the Chitzonius is the smokes and mirrors. So the fact is, yes, Chachma and Bina, the external part of the union of yud is Two friends that never got that, that known separate each other because if the God would be, would be would be a destruction in the external yud hey, there would be a destruction in the chitzonius of chachman bina. We would not be here because how would you have the flow flowing? So the destruction took place where on the internal side, and because the destruction on the internal side, therefore we don't have obviously the temple, and therefore Hashem said he's not going in there. But the external part we do have, and that's what the Rebbe actually brings that when. The Yud Hay is going to be rebuilt, not Chitzonius, because that's there right now. But the Pneumius, what will happen is the Chitzonius will be much stronger. And when the Chitzonius of the Yud Hay, the Chitzonius of the Chach, Chachman Bina is going to be much stronger, there'll be obviously much bigger and greater blessings in this physical world. But that's only going to happen when the internal Yud Hay, when the internal Chachman Bina gets rebuilt. And that will happen, obviously, what? When Mashiach comes. But nevertheless, today, we don't have it. And that's unfortunately where we have the destruction. Because the Yud Hay is not solid, and the Vav Hay is not solid. And the, the fact is, as long as it's not solid, that's, what, that's the reason, that's the cause for the whole destruction. So based on this, Rebbe actually explains a connection between this week's Torah portion and this idea. So this week's Torah portion is Pasha's Dvorim, and the Torah portion begins and it says, Eila hadvarim asher Moshe. These are the words that Moshe Rabbeinu spoke. 
Now, one second. Whose Torah is it? It's Hashem's Torah. So, and if you look through up until now, up, up, we're just starting now the, the fifth book of the five books of Moses, as it's called. In the first four books, it doesn't say Eila Hadvarim Noe that Moshe Rabbeinu speak, says. It says Vayidaber Hashem, God speaks. Vayoyimer Hashem, God says. Vayikra, even when Moshe Hashem is speaking to Vayidaber Hashem al Moshe, even Moshe Rabbeinu is speaking the words, he's saying what Hashem is speaking to him. Here you have a shift. What's the shift? Eila Hadvarim Hashem Dibe Moshe. Moshe Rabbeinu is speaking. What does that mean, Rabbi Moshe Rabbeinu is speaking? It's not his Torah, it's Hashem's Torah. But he's speaking through prophecy. So in other words, there's a major shift between the first four of the five books of Moses and the fifth of the five books. Where? In other words, how so? In this book, Moshe Rabbeinu is speaking, yes, albeit through prophecy. However, in the first four books, Moshe Rabbeinu is speaking in the th as a third person. What does that mean in the third person? So we all know that when you have three, means that you have one, two people. What is a third? The third is always someone on top of them. So obviously, the first, the first four books of, of, of five books of Moses speaking out the way. There's a shlishi hamadaber. He's speaking, so to speak, above them. And as we know, for example, Torah is connected to three because Torah, as we know, it says in the Talmud, was given on the third day of the week. Or, for example, we know that for, in, on the spiritual worlds, we learned this idea of memale kalalmin where Hashem fills His light into the world. The Soiviv Kalam, the way Hashem encompasses ex the external energy over the world, which does not have the power to come to the world. And then you have the idea of Oir Ein Soif, Atmos, the essence of the infinite light, which is above them all. So Torah is connected where it's totally above them. Now that applies to what? To when you say Shlishi Hamadabra, the way the Torah speaks in third person. So this whole power of where Torah, where Torah is above it. Torah was on the third day. Torah is Atzma, Sari, and Saif. That applies when it's Shlishi Madaber in the first four of the five books of Moses. Now we're starting, it's not Shlishi Madaber. Moshe Rabbeinu is speaking to us, true through prophecy. So it seems like, the Rebbe says, that this fifth book, we're going to be downgraded now to a lower level in the Torah. What's the issue? The problem is we know in life you have to go up. So how do you go from one book, two, three, four books, the infinite light of Hashem, all of a sudden the fifth book, we're going to go no, nosedive down, that we're downgraded to Moshe Rabbeinu speaking to us. It doesn't have the same power and the same impact of the first of the, uh, of the, uh, like the first four books of the Torah. So Rabbi explains the truth is that the reality is that the fifth book is actually even higher than the first four books. Why is that so? So Rabbi explains very simple. Because the fifth book explains things even deeper than the first four books. Also, there are, there are things in the fifth book which is, which is not discussed in the first four books of, of the Torah. Which What does that mean practically? In other words, in the first four books, it's theory, it's halachot, it's, uh, it's God is teaching us how to live a life, and so on and so forth. In the fifth book, Moshe Rabbeinu turns to us now as our leader when he's departing and he's not going to be going with in the land of Israel and he's instructing us how to live. In Hebrew, it's called Halacha Lemaisa, which means law, how we're going to live our life. So we shift it from philosophy, from theory, from all the great ideas that we're, we're going to do one day. But now we shift into Halacha Lemaisa, law in reality, what in the world of Svirot, starting with Kesser, going down, Chachma Bina Das, Chesed Gvurt Feres, Netzachot Yisrael Malchus, which Svira is Halacha Lamaisa? So the Svira of Halacha Lamaisa is the Svira of Malchus, the lowest Svira. Now, because it's the lowest one, so we know again from before, which Svira Malchus, which one is that associated to in Hashem's name in the Yud Hey the Bav Hey? So the Hey, the last Hey in Hashem's name is connected to Malchus. To recap, Yud is Chachma, Hey is Bina, Vav is the six Midot, and the last Hey in Hashem's name is Malchus. So, in other words, the fifth book of five, the five books of Moses, the book of Dvarim. What is unique and what is so powerful and what is so special about it? Which seemingly it looks like Moshe Rabbeinu is talking to us. And Moshe Rabbeinu is the one, so to speak, that's inspiring us. It's because the fifth book is 
Halacha Lamaisa, which is, resembles the sphere of Malchus, which resembles the hay, the second hay of Hashem's name. And which is actually interesting is, if you want to go a little deeper into it, as the Rebbe does, that there's an opinion that in the book of Bamidbar, there's, uh, there's the part where it speaks of Vayihib and Saya Arain, where the ark was traveling. And there's a letter before and after, upside, upside down letter of Nun, which makes that its own Torah portion. Not only its own book, its own book. Based on that, the book of Amidbar has actually three books. It's the book until Vayihib ben Saya, it's Vayihib ben Saya, and it's the book that comes afterwards. So therefore you have Bereish Shmois Vayikra, you have Bamidbar up until Vayihib ben Saya, Vayihib ben Saya, and the part after Vayihib ben Saya. So up until Dvarim, you don't have four, you actually have six of the, of the seven books of Moses, and Dvarim is the seventh, which actually is in line with that the, in the Hashem's name, the Vav, is, a, is represents the six midois, which represents the six books up until Deuteronomy, and He represents which book? The last book, the book of Dvarim. So, which represents the idea of, in, he, in Kabbalah, it's called Zun, Zer Ampin Venukva, the six midot, the six books, and the idea of Malchus. Now, we all know that the last He, Malchus, since it's so low, it's Malchus, it's nothing. It's just a receiver, and it's the last one. So the rule is in Kabbalah that the source of Malchus is all the way where? In Kesser, in the highest sphere. So we went now from looking at the book of Deuteronomy. Ah, it's Moshe Rabbeinu speaking. We just learned that it's Malchus. We learned that it's connected to the last Hay in Hashem's name. But more important, we learned that what? That Malchus is connected all the way on top. It all goes all the way to, all the way to Kesser. So in other words, so the, actually the fifth book of, of the five books of Moses, or you want to call it the seventh, of the seven books is actually higher than the first four or the first six. Why? Because since it's Hashem telling us the halachot what to do, which halacha we know, Malchus goes all the way to Ratzayin Hashem. Why is Malchus so important? Because Malchus is connected to Keser. Keser is what is Ratzayin Hashem. Now, even though the rest of the Torah we know, there's a concept in Judaism and in Kabbalah and Hasidus called Eilu ve'Eilu Divrei Lekim Chaim, that when there's an argument, they're both correct. How can they're both correct? Because in the world of Bina, there's room for everything. You can understand it like this, you can understand it like that. So in other words, the part of Torah that we say, wow, you know what, this one says like this, and so that, how are you gonna work it out? And the answer we say is they're both correct, which is a very, very high level. Eilu ve'Eilu Divrei Lekim Chaim. What sphere does that go to? It only goes to Bina, um, which is nowhere near the level of Ratzin. And the same thing also, um, even Torah, which we said Torah comes from Chachma. You know, and it's the third person, right? The first four, four of the five bucks Moses, or the uh, first six. It comes from Chachma. So Torah goes as far as Bina, or it goes as far as Chachma. On the other hand, where does Malchus go to? Malchus goes all the way to Ratzin, which is much higher than, than, than Chachma and Bina. Why is that so? Because since it's Ratzin, it's the will of Hashem, the Ratzin of Hashem has to go down so, so low. And, and because it's so low, different goes so, so high. And that's why the Torah, when you learn Torah, the Torah has the power to create and maintain the world. Why does the Torah have the power and create, to create and maintain the world? Because it comes from a very, very high level of the idea of Ratzin. So here you see, again, the Rebbe connects the idea where it speaks about Eilah HaDvar Mashadibah Moshe. Meaning says that we're starting now a new book. We're starting back the book of Dvarim, which actually is a level of Malchus, which is connected to the idea of Ratzin, which is the same idea we learned before that um, when it comes to, to action, action of the second hay of Hashem's name reaches much higher and Hashem wants to see the last hay being rebuilt. So based on this, the Rebbe explains that what's the connection of the lower hay, which is action, we're going to understand that the whole idea that we originally asked, why in the verse of this week's Haftorah, it says, 
v'shaveha b'tzdaka. If we're dealing with simple people, we're giving them b'tzdaka, the infinite, versus the Talmudic scholars, we're giving them mishpah, just din and just judgment. Why is that so? So Rebbe explains, based on later on in, in the book of Deuteronomy, in Pashas Natsavim, it says a fascinating verse, and it says like this. It says, Hani starois, the things that are hidden, l'Hashem aleikeinu, is to Hashem our God. V'haniglois, the things that are revealed, are lonu for us, l'vaneinu for our children. That's a simple understanding of the verse. Things that are hidden, Hashem knows everything, there's no secrets for Hashem. Things that are revealed, we can relate to things that are revealed. That's a simple understanding. But the Rebbe explains, what does that mean? Nistarois is a reference to what? The Yud and the He. What's the connection between Nistarois and the, and the Yud and the He? Because what's the idea of Nistarois? The Rebbe explains that we all know when we serve Hashem, there's different ways to serve Hashem. One of the ways we serve Hashem we love Hashem. We're in awe of Hashem. Whether we're learning Torah, we do with love and awe. Whether we're doing with a mitzvah, we're doing with love and awe. Whether we're praying with love and awe. Or we go through life and we're happy with love and awe. What is love and awe based on? Love and awe, according to Chassidus, is a child. It's a product. Why does someone have more love or less love or more awe or less, less awe? It's all based on our intellect. A, our depth of our understanding or how much we actually meditate. So based on our intellect and based on our meditation, that's the type of love and all we're going to develop. Now, when it comes to love and all, which is based on our intellect, every person's unique. Every person is different. So therefore the Rebbe says, Hani Storois, which is referring to, we said, Hashem, or Hashem Elokeinu, which is yud, 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 yud Hei, the first half, which is based on our Chachman. Yud Hei is Chachman Bina. Anything which has to do with our Chachman Bina, the only one knows that Hashem. Because everyone has a different relationship with Hashem, based on their intellect. So when it comes to things which are born out of our Yud Hei, when we use our intellect to meditate, to create love and offer Hashem, the only one that knows it is Hashem. How does, how, do, how does anyone know? It's, every, it's unique. It's unique to every individual. And the only one that knows it is Hashem. However, Vaniglois is a reference to what? Vav Hei. What does that mean? Why is Niglois a reference to Vav Hei? Because Vav Hei is a reference to the idea of do, learning Torah, the physical part, the mitzvah of learning Torah, and doing mitzvahs. Now, when it comes to putting in an hour of learning Torah, it doesn't make a difference how smart you are or not, or as, or how 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 not smart you are, or how intelligent you are, how much you spend meditating on it. If you put in an hour of learning Torah, it's an hour of learning Torah. If you do a mitzvah, it doesn't make a difference how wise or unwise you are. Whoever you are, wherever you are, holding spiritually, emotionally, intellectually, a mitzvah is a mitzvah. So therefore, if you do a mitzvah and someone else does a mitzvah, or anyone, the greatest tzaddik does a mitzvah and the simple person does a mitzvah, it's a mitzvah. So when it comes to doing a mitzvah, v'haniglois, it's revealed. You either did the mitzvah, you didn't do the mitzvah. So because it's revealed, so v'haniglois is connected to the vavhei, and that's something which applies to everybody the same. And we know the altar writes in Tanya, the altar writes in Tanya as follows, that everything that is going to be in the future, in Yemois HaMashiach, all the tremendous rewards we're going to have when Mashiach comes, all the tremendous rewards when it's going to be Tchiyas HaMesim, when the dead are going to be resurrected, it is all dependent, and the altar says clearly, on Maseinu Vaboy Deseinu, on our actions and our work in Golos doesn't say that it's dependent on our meditation. It doesn't say it's dependent on our intellect. He says clearly, all the rewards when Mashiach comes, Yemois Mashiach and Tchiyas HaMesim, has to do with one thing and one thing only, Ma'asenu, our, our, our actions, which is our mitzvahs, Learning Torah is a mitzvah, davening is a mitzvah, but the mitzvah part of it, all our mitzvahs in this world, the 613 commandments, is 248 positive, 365 negative, and avoida, which means doing more than we can do in the world of mitzvahs. And that's why it's very, very important in this world to do as much mitzvahs as you can. Because when Mashiach comes, that's when you're going to get paid. That's when you're going to get profit from all your mitzvahs. So you want to do the mitzvahs now. You can't do them then. You have to do it now. You have to do the mitzvahs now. So because 
what causes the tremendous reward when Mashiach comes, what causes the tremendous reward in Tchiyas HaMesim, it's the mitzvahs that we do now. And that's why by mitzvahs it says Niglois, which is the Vavhei, because our mitzvahs today, it's what's going to cause to rebuild the temple, the third temple, the third temple we're going to have is going to be thanks to us doing mitzvahs down here in this world. And based on this, the Rabbi explains beautifully, that's why it says clearly, V'shaveha b'tzdaka. Tzion, when it refers to people learning Torah, which is great and it's important, but mishpat. Yeah, there has to be judgment. This one's smarter. This one learned more. This one meditated more. This one's love was, was on a higher level and a lower level. But when it comes with Shaveha to redeem the people, Bitsdaka, it's very simple. The ones that did the mitzvahs reach the highest places. Malchus. The last hay reaches the highest level, reaches Kesser, reaches Taina, reaches Ratzain. So the simple mitzvah is down here, but Shaveha, but reach the highest places. And because of that, it creates the infinite blessings. And what is the greatest blessing, the Rebbe says? The greatest blessings is, to have, the blessings will be wisdom, to understand Hashem, Emes, to have truth, to see the truth of Hashem, to see Hashem speak. When Mashiach comes, when we do the mitzvahs now, we're going to be redeemed without limits. We will see Pi Hashem Diber, the way Hashem speaks to us. We're going to see the true Redeemer, the first Redeemer, Moshe Rabbeinu, the last Redeemer, Moshe Rabbeinu. We'll see King David. We'll see all the greatest gifts. But that's all going to come from one thing and one thing only. V'shaveha b'tzdaka. So here you see a beautiful discourse. So Yerby explains, even though learning Torah is great and we should learn Torah and we should meditate, but what's really, really, really important is doing the mitzvahs. Because mitzvahs, the simple actions, reach the highest places. And because it reaches the highest places, it will give us the greatest gifts, the infinite blessings of v'shaveha b'tzdaka, l'cha Hashem b'tzdaka will receive the Blessings of Hashem, the greatest blessing of Hashem, the blessings that have no limits. So now it's the three weeks. It's a great time to see as we can do as many mitzvahs as possible because mitzvahs will give us the greatest rewards. Thanks so much for joining us for our chassidus class and have a great and blessed week.